In Stardew Valley, you can do amazing things. You can automate watering your crops with iridium sprinklers. You can fill the quarry with crystallariums and produce hundreds of diamonds. You can build the endgame obelisks and teleport to any part of the map. But to do any of these things, you will need tons of iridium. To get it, you need to go to Skull Cavern and in the deepest levels of this dangerous dungeon, you will find iridium ores. And then you smell them like you smell any other ore. But what are the tools you need to survive in Skull Cavern? and get tons of iridium. In this video, I'm going to show you three different tool sets you can use at different stages of the game. Plus, I also did a fun joke run with infinite resources in the end. Something anyone can use on their first skull cavern run. The next one is a medium build. This one will require some resources, mostly ones that can be easily bought or farmed. The third one is the pro build. This has everything that can help you to get deeper in Skull Cavern, even rare items. First, let's start with the budget build. You have reached the bottom of the mines and got the Skull Key, and you repair the boss either using the Community Center or Joja Mart. Let's see what you should take with you on your first run in Skull Cavern. The number one thing you will need to survive is going to be a weapon. In this run, we are going to use the Obsidian Edge, because you already have found it on level 90 of the mines. If you need something a bit stronger, you can buy the Lava Katana at the Adventurer's Guild. Next one is the Pickaxe. At this point, the highest level pickaxe you can get is the Gold one. If you don't have a Gold Pickaxe yet, I recommend upgrading now. The next essential item is Food. Food is important for one reason, and it's not energy recovery. It's restoring health. You will take a lot of damage in Skull Cavern. And you need to be prepared for that. When you choose your food, you need to look at the health restoration value, not energy. In my run, I'm going to use salads because those can be purchased from gas. If you have the kitchen, you can use any food you can craft, or you can even just use your crops. It is best if the food you are using for health recovery doesn't have any effects because you can only have the effects of one food at a time. If at this point you have found food that gives you some useful effects, like luck, combat, speed or defense perks, you can take one or two with you. In school caverns, the serpents might also drop spicy eel, a food that gives you extra speed and luck. You don't want to overwrite those useful effects with the food that you consume just for health. In one of my runs, I used 9 salads and 10 in the other one. I suggest taking more if you want some extra healing. These are the essentials, but there are some optional items you also might want to take with you if you have some. And you probably do actually have some of these after completing the mines. Bombs. At this point, you might only have a few, but take them with you. If you have less than about 60, use them sparingly, only when you have a chance to blow up a lot of stone at once. In my first run, I'm not going to take any bombs with me, but I will craft them in the mines if I find enough iron and coal. I will just use the medium-sized bombs. The cherry bombs affect a really small area. The biggest bombs are fine too, but on most maps the fact that they affect a larger area than the medium bombs doesn't really matter that much, because most maps are not that big anyways. Also the big bombs deal more damage, and in some cases you will not be able to leave the bombs range, and you will need to take the damage. That is true of the medium bombs as well, but less damage is easier to manage, and Damage management is one of the most important skills to have in Skull Cavern. Stairs. If you have a few hundred stones, you should definitely craft some. I would suggest about five of them. Use them only to skip monster levels, since those take a lot of time and food to clear and are very dangerous. Rings. Don't forget to equip your rings. If you have more than two, choose wisely. Light rings are not necessary in Skull Cavern, and not useful at all. Rings that can help you in combat are good. Magnet rings are fine because they help you collect items faster and uh, leave the level more quickly. 
The effect also stacks. Using two magnet rings give you a larger magnetic field. So if you only have magnet rings or you only have magnets and light rings, bring two magnets. Quartz. What are you going to use quartz in school cavern for? Nothing. You are going to trade them with the desert merchant for more bombs. Ruby. If you have any, take them with you and trade them with the desert merchant for spicy eel. I ended up recording two runs. One with a really basic setup described above. I even forgot to wear shoes on this one. <laughs> then I did a more realistic run with some of the optional items. In my first run, with the basic setup, I actually got so lucky finding jumping holes and iridium nodes, I ended up with more iridium in my first run. Although after selling my items, I got more money in the second run. I will upload the full footage of all of my skull cavern runs I mentioned in this video. You will find the playlist in the description. In the first one, I ended up getting 21 iridium ores and I even got 2 iridium bars from a treasure chest. Got some other items too, if I sold all of these, I would get 8556 gold. In the second one, I actually ended up getting 18 iridium ores. I really did get lucky in the first round with the jumping holes. And this also shows that the most important thing when it comes to skull cavern is getting as deep as possible. In both of these runs, I got down to the lower 50s levels. An extra tip. Stay in skull cavern until 2 am and pass out. All you will lose is a thousand gold max. You are not going to lose any items. The extra time you spend mining is totally worth it. Medium build. For this one, you will need to go shopping. Like before, I still suggest you bring quartz and rubies. If you have any jade and you go on a Sunday, you can also trade those for stairs. But the most important thing you need to bring with you are the Omni Geodes, at least three of them. For those, you should purchase at least one Desert Warp Totem. You can purchase multiples for later runs, if you have the Omni Geodes for them. These totems make a huge difference. Normally, using the bus, you can only start your trip at 10 am. 9.40 if you stand in Pam's way and make her run. <laughs> With the totem, you can be in the desert at 6 am. That's 4 hours earlier than normally. A giant advantage. If you already found the prismatic shard, bring that to the desert as well. Stand between the columns above the trader holding the prismatic shard. This way you will get the galaxy sword, the best weapon in the game. This is going to be your weapon for the run. There are two other things you might want to buy. The first one is stone from Robin, to make stairs, especially if you are still in year 1, when stone is cheaper. The second are bombs. If you found all four dwarf squirrels, you can talk to the dwarf in the mines and buy bombs from him. You can also farm bombs. Watch my video to learn how. Now that you have some iridium from the first few rounds, I also suggest upgrading your pickaxe at Clint and crafting at least one iridium band ring. You can craft and wear two of them, because its effects stack, just like with the magnet rings. In the end, the items I suggest you take are the galaxy sword, an iridium pick, food, I will take 40 salads, but that might be overkill, bombs, I will take 80 at this point, this time you can use them a lot more than before, stairs, I will take about 30 this time, I will use them up until I have 5 left. 1 or 2 spicy eel. The most important thing, the warp totem. Rings. At least 1 iridium band, I will take 1 iridium band and the magnet ring. Set up your inventory at night, then go to sleep. In the morning check your luck, if it's a good luck day, teleport to the desert. In this run, I ended up getting 307 pieces of iridium ores, and I got more than 57,000 gold for selling everything. Pro build. In this one, we are going to bring everything that has the potential to help us get down deep enough and mine tons of iridium. First of all, we are going to bring our sword, of course. Or maybe not. 
I told you in this video that the Galaxy Sword is the most powerful weapon. But actually, there is also the Galaxy Hammer. It hits harder, but it is a bit less quick and knocks the enemies back more. If you take this into account, your choice could just be a matter of taste. But there is something else. There is a glitch in Stardew Valley that affects all hammers, including the Galaxy Hammer. If you right click and then spam left click and then right click again, the game calculates your damage as if you used the special ability of the hammer multiple times. This deals an extremely high amount of damage to everything. In all of my runs, I will use the Galaxy Sword. But I wanted to let you know that it is possible to have an even more powerful weapon. Especially considering the glitch. You might think that the second thing is obviously your pickaxe. However, I heard people who didn't want to bring a pickaxe at all, because at this point, they have enough bombs to just use those for mining. And the pickaxe just takes up an extra space in your limited inventory. I personally like bringing a pickaxe, because sometimes I just want to break a few stones that are in the way. In the previous runs, I didn't even bring this up, because I found that the three rows of inventory were just enough. But in this one, I might need to make some choices. I don't expect them to be very difficult ones, and I do prefer to bring a pickaxe. You will want to bring food again. The next one are bombs. This time we are going to bring way more of them. This is also something I want to experiment with. I'm going to bring 200 of them for now, and I will tell you how much of them I used up in the end. Next one is staircases. Now, the reason you want to get as deep in Skull Cavern as possible is because the amount of Iridium per level keeps increasing the deeper you go. After level 100, this rate of increase will slow down. So there will still be more Iridium on each level, but the difference is going to be smaller. In this build, I will take 105 stairs to reach level 100, and still have a few left. For buffs, you will obviously want the magic rock candy. You can buy this from the desert trader for 3 prismatic shards. Again, you will want to get at least one desert warp totem. As for rings, I will take a burglar's ring for the most possible loot from monsters, and for the other one, the good old iridium band. In the end, I had 53 bombs left, so 200 might be a bit of an overkill. In this run, I got 463 iridium ores and about 80,000 gold after selling everything. That makes me curious about another thing. Is mining iridium actually profitable in this game? I mean, we made a lot of money, but if you want this setup, you also need to spend a lot of money on bombs and staircases. I might actually answer this question in a future video, so if you also want to know that, you can subscribe, or if you really want to know it, you can even turn on the notifications. And now, the infinite build. In this one, I was using the red bombs. I have infinite health, so that's not an issue. I got bored of placing stairs at level 536 and started mining. I also bought two magic rock candies, but I only ended up using one of them. In this run, I got more than 700 iridium ores and more than 100,000 gold after selling everything. That's it for this video. See you next time.